Hi guys, I'm Talisa with Talisa Aquarius and today is the day that I set up my 40 gallon breeder fish tank. I'm so excited to do this. And you guys, I'm like really leveling up with this tank. I have never done like a bunch of hardscape for a tank. And today I went to Sunken Ship Aquatics, my local fish store, and I spent a fair amount of money on hardscape, just hardscape. I also got a few plants, but I'll be clipping most of the plants from my tanks. I've spent so much money on plants, it's starting to pay off, guys. And just like a little teaser, the piece of driftwood that I bought for this 40 gallon breeder tank was originally $200 or like 190 some dollars. And he gave it to me 50% off, Bo, the owner of this fish store, he gave it to me 50% off for like $100 or like 90 some dollars, something like that. He was so generous with me and I feel like I owe it to him to do this beautiful piece of driftwood justice. When he told me how much the piece originally cost, I was like shocked. I did not realize that you could even spend that much money on a piece of driftwood. Like this is just one piece of driftwood and I'm so thankful that he lowered the price to $100 for me because when I seen it, I knew I had to have it. It's beautiful. And I'm not going to show it to you guys just yet. You're gonna have to keep watching the video. So first things first, I need to empty this tank. I need to remove the beta fish, remove all the plants, take everything out, and then I will get started on the soil. Also, my new higher light came in and oh my goodness, guys. It's amazing. I hope that it grows plants really well because if it does, I'm not buying anything else other than Hyger Lights from here on out. It's so cool. Um, here, so I have it on the 24 seven setting. Super cool. This morning I looked in the room and so like it, when you have it on the 24 seven setting, the light adjusts itself to like the moon and the sun, right? So this morning I got up early, the sun was just starting to come up. Well, I guess it wasn't that early because the sun was coming up, but I got up, the sun was just coming up and the tank was like a glowing orange, just like the color of the sun outside. And then as the sun came up higher and turned more pink, the tank got brighter and more pink looking versus orange. And right now it's afternoon and so it's a little bit brighter. And I just think that's the coolest thing ever. Obviously there's a lot of other different settings. I could put it on, like I could set the timer where it comes on every six hours, 10 hours, or 12 hours. Um, I can have it on manually. I can adjust how bright it is or how dim it is. I'm just doing it on the 24 seven. I think it's really cool that I could just like go on vacation and my lights will just turn themselves on and off and adjust themselves to like the light outside. That's pretty awesome. Okay, so I have most of the water out now. I left a little bit of water, um, not much, just a small amount because I'm going to add potting soil into here. I decided to save a little bit of money and go with potting soil instead of aqua soil. Plus I thought it would be good for me to show you guys how to use potting soil in your dirted tanks if you don't wanna spend the money on aqua soil. Okay, so I'm finished with the potting soil now. Um, I think I did about an inch in most places. It's a little thicker back here because I'm going to have a sloped effect over in that corner. So I'm going to pour more sand in there as well. You want the mixture of the potting soil to be cakey. You don't want it to be really sloppy and wet because then when you pour the sand on, the sand will sink underneath the potting soil. And also, Make sure you use 
organic potting soil. You don't want to use just normal potting soil. Make sure it's organic. Make sure you add enough water to it that it's cakey and all wet, but not too much water, you know? So I'm going to see the sides here. There's potting soil all up on the sides. I'm going to take my squirt bottle and spray it down with water and just get all that potting soil off the sides of the tank before I add sand. Now for the fun part. Okay, I have added the sand to the tank now, and notice how it is steeper in the back, or deeper in the back than it is in the front. This just gives it more dimension if you're wanting to scape the tank. It's not necessary. I'm going to start adding the hardscape and the plants, and now it's time to show you guys my beautiful piece of driftwood. Okay guys, here it is. What do you think? I'm going to mess around with it for a bit and just see what I like best. Let me take the light off. I already have an idea for how I want to put it in the tank. It's so beautiful. Okay, let me mess around with it for a bit. All right, this is my first hardscape where I've actually like put a lot of time and effort into a hardscape. I knew it would look good, but I was so far out of my comfort zone. I was so nervous and I love it, guys. Now I'm just nervous about adding plants. I need to place the plant super strategically so it draws attention to the hardscape, and hardscape instead of like covering it up. And I'm not really sure how to go about doing that but I'm going to give it a try. But guys, I'm so like excited about this hardscape. I now understand why people have fish tanks with no plants in them and just hardscape. Like this is just so beautiful and so like dreamy. But adding the plants will make it less sterile looking and I think it's just gonna be beautiful. Also, don't forget, I'm doing all this for these two beta fish right here. My beta fish are pretty spoiled, guys. Okay, it is partially planted now, and I'm going to come over here to these tanks and trim some of the plants out of them a lot of the stem plants and I will add it into here. And I'm also going to glue some moss to partial, like some of the driftwood, not all of it for sure, but some of the driftwood I'm going to glue some moss to and then we will be back. I did it guys. I have the tank all filled up with water and this is by far my most favorite tank I've ever done. I'm so glad that I pushed myself out of my comfort zone. You know, I used to see, like, like I would go on YouTube and Instagram and see all of your guys' tanks that like were scaped so well and I'm just like, oh, that's not my style or oh, I could never do that 
or I wish I could do that. And then I was like, you know, that's like a really self-limiting belief. Like I can do anything that I set my mind to do. So I watched some videos about hardscape and how to make the tank look nice. And I incorporated those into this tank and I could not be more pleased. Like I didn't think it was going to be that easy and it really was. Like I put a lot of effort and time and thought into the tank, but it was worth it and it really didn't take me that much longer than just setting up any of my other tanks and it looks so much better than my other tanks because I pushed myself and learned more and competed against myself and without further ado I'm going to show you guys the tank. Alrighty here's the tank it's a 40 gallon breeder the beta fish are acclimating right now what do you guys think? I am in love with it. Um, I want, I mean, it doesn't look exactly how I want it to look, but once these plants really fill in and get really robust, it will look perfect. I tried to put all the plants towards the back behind the hardscape so that when they grow in, they simply complement the hardscape instead of taking over and then all the hardscape would be for nothing, you know? I set this tank up specifically for my betta fish experiment in which I will be putting these two betta fish together, letting them live together, and hopefully they will breed and have babies together. But the tank is supposed to be a lot more heavily planted for that, so I'm a little nervous to release her. But they also have a much larger body of water to swim in, and there is a lot of things to like obstruct their swimming in view of each other. Um, but I'm a little uncomfortable to release her, so I'm not sure. When I do release them, I'll just watch them for a long time. And if I don't think it's safe, I will just put her back in the cup and just kind of start over again. I need to go get another Indian almond leaf and put it at the top of the tank so he can build another bubble nest. And maybe I just need to reintroduce them. I don't know. We'll see how they get along. But I'm super excited about this tank. Love how it turned out. I'm going to love watching all the plants fill in, and it really puts my other tanks to shame. <laughs> Part of it is the lighting. Like, this Hyger light is like a hundred times better than my other lights. I would recommend not buying lights at Petco or PetSmart. That's where I've bought all my other lights. This one is so much better. You can find Hyger lights on Amazon, and they are great. I'm hoping it grows plants well. We'll see. I can't recommend it for planted tanks yet because I haven't seen how it grows the plants, but I'm sure it will do great. I've heard good reviews of them. So I'm going to add this katapa leaf to the tank for King Koi to build his bubble nest under. He loves building his bubble nest under these. And I'm going to release the betta fish and just watch them for a bit and see how they do. And now that I have a light on the tank, I can see his colors so much better. Well, he's kind of at the back now, but when he comes forward or to the front of the tank, you guys will be able to see him so much better. And I'm going to release Fable. Let's just see how they get along. You can tell she, her fins are just somewhat torn up, but other than that, she's looking really good. She doesn't look stressed or anything. I am a little worried that she won't have enough hiding places in this tank until more plants go in, grow in, but we'll see. Also, King Koi is getting some blue on his fins. I'm wondering if he's going to end up turning blue. The really cool thing about Koi betta fish is they can just change colors as they age and mature. There's a little bit of flaring going on, but nothing too crazy. Um, because the tank is new to both of them, neither of them are going to be as territorial, so that's another thing to keep in mind. But he also doesn't have a bubble nest built, so he's not really ready to be breeding right now because I destroyed his bubble nest when I set up the tank. And while they're getting acquainted with their tank and just exploring, I thought I would point out to you guys all the plants, all the different types of plants that I have in here for those of you wanting to start a planted tank. 
and want to know some of my favorite plants for it. So right here I have a small crypt and back here I have some dwarf sag. I have some java moss, actually maybe it's Christmas moss, I don't remember, glued to the back of this rock. I didn't want it on the front of the rock. And I have a few strands of pearl weed right here in front of the rock and right here beside the rock. And back here I have several clumps of rotala and I have some moss glued to this piece of wood here. And I have another crypt right here up front. And then back behind that I have a little bit of guppy grass and quite a lot of dwarf sag. Dwarf sag will really fill in the space a lot. And I have a sword plant back there. And again, a few more pieces of pearl weed and some more pearl weed. And right here, I don't remember what this plant is called. I can't remember. And then in the back, I have some, um, oh, what is it called? Jungle Val, that's what I have. And the Jungle Val should get really tall and it should grow clear up to the top and then arch over, like lay down in the water. I think that will be really beautiful. Also, I'm just loving seeing King Koi under this light. His colors really pop. He was, like ever since I've gotten him, I've kept him in this tank with no light. And I love being able to see him under the light now. The light in this tank isn't very bright. I have it on the 24 seven lighting. So in the evening, it just goes dimmer and dimmer and dimmer until it shuts off during the night. And then in the morning, it starts out just kind of a glowing orangish pink and gets brighter and brighter throughout the day, which I think is so cool. Oh, we'll see if he attacks her. Oh, no. And I may need to put her in a cup and just keep her in a cup until he has a bubble nest built and is more ready for her. But I don't know. I'll just fill it out, I guess. Forgot to mention, I also have um, some tiger lotus back here and then a banana plant back there as well. They were kind of hidden. Forgot to point that out when I was telling you about the plants. And I also have floaters here in the tank. I have some water lettuce and some duckweed. I didn't intentionally add duckweed, it just pops up in all of my tanks now. Some of you guys have probably noticed that I don't have a filter on this tank, and there is a reason for that. Because I did a dirted tank, like the Wallstad method, I have potting soil in the bottom and a thick layer of sand capping that off. Um, and then I have enough plants in here that I shouldn't ever need a filter and I shouldn't ever even need to do a water change either. There's not enough bio load in this tank for water changes or a filter to be necessary. And that is why I just love doing dirted tanks uh, because they really maintain themselves very well. When you have a thick layer of substrate that is rich with nutrients to feed the plants, the tank really takes care of itself so long as you don't overload the tank. King Koi was chasing Fable just a little too much, so I've decided for my own peace of mind and for her safety to keep her in a cup um, for at least a day until he has a good bubble nest built and then release her. And if he's still too aggressive, I'll just put her back in her own tank until the plants have grown in more and then try to breed them again. So it could be a while, um, but I really just don't want this experiment to end with a dead beta fish, so I'm going to be very careful with it. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you would like to follow along to see the tank's progress and plant growth, and also to watch my beta experiment and see how that turns out, please consider subscribing. I post fish-related content multiple times a week. And thank you guys for watching.